This is why I love making PS3 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Proud Phoenix Media. In today's video tutorial, I want to do like a quick refresher video where let's say you have a PS3 Slim, it's compatible with an E3 Flasher. How do you do that whole E3 Flasher process? So here's a very dedicated video to that. And then if you want to learn how to, let's say you finished dumping and you flashed over your patch dump to the PS3 Slim or the FAT, how do you finish off with that whole rebuff installation process? Well, I already made a video on that topic. I'll have that in the video description. But today's video is more about this part of it. Some people think it's a little bit complicated and I'm gonna show you it's not too bad. So here's a quick refresher video. Let's do this. So on, on the video description, I have a link to the PS3 jailbreak tool. So if we take a look at my monitor here, um, I apologize if, if it's not you know, too clear. But basically what we have is we're going to have some special tools and I'll have a link in the video description. But basically the first thing we want to do is copy over the E3 Flasher update to like a micro SD card. So if I go to my E3 Flasher update, there's a Samsung 10.28 update and go ahead, right click and send this to like a blank micro SD card that's formatted as FAT32. I already have a file on there so I'm going to go ahead and overwrite it. And then what I'm going to do and then we'll go ahead and eject my SD card reader. Okay, great. Now let's go back to the PS3. Um, let me just remove this micro SD card from this adapter. It's like stuck at the moment. There we go. So now we go down here to the PS3 Slim. Here's the port where you put the micro SD card. I'm using two gigabytes if anybody's interested, but that's more than enough. You can get by with a one gigabyte too as well and just make sure you put it in there carefully lock it in place okay so what you want to do is you want to have uh, switch one and two down three up four up five up six up right um, you got your e3 flasher connected you got this clamp here power is connected to the ps3 I see there's a red light on here so let's go ahead and turn it on and you know if it took the E3 flasher update if all eight LEDs are illuminated, which it is. Okay, they're not flashing or anything like that. Great. Um, we see that the fan heat sink is on properly. Otherwise, I would hear the fan um, get faster and faster. For now, we're, I think we're okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go... So one and two is down. Three is up. Four, five, and six is down. And then I'm going to push this button right here. This is the reset button. So we reset that guy, okay. Now the left button over here, this very top red button is the start button. So let's go ahead and press that start button. So let's see if it's gonna take the dump. So what we're doing right now is we're reading the first dump, okay. If your E3 flasher clip is on nice and tight and secure, you will not see any flashing error codes. So we're just gonna wait a little bit and if everything is good, what we'll see is the LEDs will light up from left to right in order um, one by one by one and that whole process takes about like two minutes so I'm just waiting here for the first LED if you have a bad LED if you have a bad um, clip attachment it will like error out within the first five or ten seconds it's very quick but here we see that we're successful so far we're taking the first LED is down I mean it's lit up the second LED is lit up and so on and so forth so what I'm going to do is um, I'm gonna let it record and I'll probably skip ahead later in the video when once all eight LEDs are, are lit up. But the idea is what you wanna do is um, after the first dump is successful, copy it to your computer, okay? And then go back to your E3 flasher, do a second dump, copy that over to your computer, go back to your E3 flasher and then um, um, dump it to your SD card and copy back to your computer. So in the end, you wanna do this a total of three times, okay? And the reason you want to do that for a total of three times is we're going to use some programs here to compare that the dumps are equal to each other. If they are equal, that's great because you know that you have a very good and secure connection of your E3 flasher to your PS3 motherboard. The last thing you want to do is have a, a loose connection and then you patch your dump, you flash it over and it breaks your PS3. So we see that the reading is done. So let's go ahead, take out the micro SD card. I'm just going to be careful here. Okay. And I have like this micro SD card adapter. So I'm just 
put it here, put it back in my computer here. So let's go back to this TV. Hopefully you guys can see it. So what I want to do is insert the SD card. Okay, so I'm gonna go here, uh, whatever. So I'm gonna go into the SD card. There's two files, that's fine. I'm gonna cut them. I'm gonna go to my folder here. I'm just gonna make a new folder called just like dump one, paste it. So we're pasting the files to my computer. Great, so I'm gonna go ahead, got the SD card now. I'm going to take it out, put it back on the E3 flasher. And then push the reset button on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, go ahead and press start. And then it's gonna do that process again. So for sake of time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, stop the video and then we will recontinue the video once I have all three dumps and I'll show you what that compare process looks like. Um, let's do this. Okay, we're back. We got the three dumps. So let's go ahead to my computer here. And let's just try to zoom in just a tiny bit here. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I have dump one, dump two, dump three. And in the download, there's a program here called HXDen. And this is what it looks like, okay? So what you wanna do is basically you go to analysis, file compare, and then compare. And here you have the source file and you have the target file. So in the source file, you select like dump one. Target file, you select like dump two. So let's go ahead and do that real quick here. So I'm gonna go to my desktop, go to my tools here, dump files. I'm gonna select the bkpps3.bin as the source. And in the target file, I'm gonna do the same thing, but for dump two. Select that guy, say open, okay. The chosen files are identical. So let's do that one more time, just to be safe. Let's compare uh, the dump three as a target file. So dump three, bin, okay. The chosen files are identical, great. Okay, so now, another check you can do to make sure everything is good. And there's a program called NOR Inspector, so run that guy, okay. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my dump one folder select the bkpps3.bin, left click it and drag it over into the program. It's gonna do some calculations and analysis. This is what it looks like over here. You go to status and we just scroll down and say everything is green, everything says okay, that's awesome. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get ready for the patching process. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and run this program called the Flash Tool. Actually it's called a PS3 Dump Checker. Anyways, let's run it. And if you don't know how to update the program, let me show you how to update it just so you are on the latest version and just to be on the safe side. So what you wanna do is on the right hand corner, top right hand corner is like a down arrow, click on that guy. And then here is gonna go ahead and download like uh, the change log. So here you can download the latest CFG. It says you are already using the latest CFG. Download, download the latest hash list. So I did that, I'm using the latest. Download the latest PS3 dump checker and it says I'm running the latest version. Okay, great. So what you wanna do now is basically go back to your folder, select your dump, the bkpps3.bin, left click it and drag it over into the program. So it's gonna do an analysis and the best case scenario is everything is green, no errors. It's gonna ask, do you wanna patch it? And say yes. Okay, so here we see everything is green. It says a big fat okay, we're good to go. We're in a home stretch, guys. So it's gonna make a file that's called bkpps3 underscore patched dot bin. So what you wanna do is go ahead and right click, copy it, go to your micro SD card, and then paste it into the root by itself. And then over here, press like F2, or you can right click it and go to rename, and just rename it so it says bkpps3 dot bin. You don't want a dot bin dot bin. So make sure that you only got one file extension. That's it. Now you can close everything down. You can eject your micro SD cards. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, great. So that's good. Let's go back to the PS3. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and take the micro SD card out of my adapter. 
put it back into the E3 flasher. Oops. Reset it. And then the third switch is down. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, all the switches are down, right? So now what you want to do is make sure the SD card, micro SD card is nice and secure in, in, the, in the holder and go ahead and press start. And here you don't want to touch anything, just leave it alone. It's going to take about eight minutes. Um, if there's an error during the patching, you'll see like an error code, like maybe uh, LED 1 and 5 and 6 are blinking. That means you got a, something's wrong with your E3 flasher clips, so recheck it. So each LED here takes approximately two minutes. Um, so it's going to take a while. So I'm just going to sit here and wait just to see that the first LED uh, lights up. If it does, great. And then we'll fast forward and skip near the end of the video where I show you that all eight LEDs are lit up and that process is done. So, so let's assume that uh, this goes smoothly and your, all your eight LEDs are lit up. So what do you do after that? Basically, you shut everything down, add new thermal paste, put your PS3 slim back together, and then go ahead and go forward with installing like a rebug CFW. You do not have to downgrade to 3.55. You can actually go from like 4.80 or 4.81 OFW or higher if there's a, a new one in the future and go straight to rebug. So you don't have to go down to 3.55 anymore. I thought you did when I first started this whole process many years ago. Turns out you don't. That's awesome. Saves you a lot of time. If you're still confused on how that process looks like, I'll have a link in the video description to my video that is just dedicated to that small segment of how do you finish off with a rebug installation. So here we see that the first LED is lit. I'm 110% confident that the rest of this will go along smoothly. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause the video and once we're near the end about the seventh LED, I'll, I'll show you the video so you can see that yes, this is legit, this is working and we're ready to have a lot of good times. Let's do this. Okay, we're back. So I readjusted the camera to give you a, a closer look of what's, uh, what's happening basically. So we're on the seventh LED it just turned, uh, the seventh LED just lit up, so I'm waiting for the last one. Once all eight LEDs are lit up, it's gonna flash back and forth as a group, and that's how you know you're successful. So, um, just so you guys know, I've been doing this for a long time now, a couple years now, so I've been jailbreaking, downgrading consoles for friends and family, coworkers, uh, you name it. So, uh, for the YouTube subscriber base, if you have a PS3, possibly, and you're interested in looking for someone to jailbreak, um, I might be able to do it for you. So if you are interested in that kind of stuff, just let me know. Send me a PM, Facebook, um, email, whatever, and we can work out the details. But anyways, in general, if you have the AD Flasher, by all means, if you want to learn how to do it, do it yourself, more power to you. It's real simple. So we see that all eight LEDs are flashing like that. We're good to go. That means we are completed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn off the system, and then I'm going to go ahead and... Raise this a little bit, guys. Zoom out. And then I'm just going to remove this clamp here because it's been a lot of pressure for the last 15 minutes or whatever it is. And we're good to go. I'll pull this off. And then let's disconnect the power. And I'm going to disconnect that. And if you guys are curious on what the bottom looks like, well, this is what it looks like. So here I got the two heat sinks. It's got a piece of cardboard so the metal doesn't short out. So the next step is basically take everything apart, put the new thermal paste back on, put the whole PS3 back together, and then just follow through with installing the Rebug CFW through the USB thumb drive method. Like I said, if you don't know or you're not comfortable with what that process is, I have a link in the video description that shows that back end. So, the first end, the first half of this with the downgrading portion can be a little bit techy, a little bit technical, maybe a little bit intimidating, but it's not too bad, guys. So if you have any questions, let me know. I'll help you out. And one important tip is make sure you shave your E3 flasher clip. I do have a dedicated video on that topic, but if you're having issues with errors on your PS3 Slim, make sure you shave both sides of the clip down. And when I say shaving it, I mean literally shave down the right-hand side and the left hand side of the clip using like a thin screwdriver just shave it down 
because what happens is there's a bunch of transistors and resistors and IC components on the motherboard that may get in the way of your E3 flasher clip. So this video is a bit longer than I anticipated, but that's okay. It's got a lot of good information and it's real information. So you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.